Hi guys, I'm Rich W W T Man, and here is the next part of the video series, which is on the World Two Gem Tornister and how to pack it. And this is my second attempt at it, so hopefully this one is going to work. So first off, I'll just explain what sort of tornisters were used by the Germans during the Second World War. I'll start with the oldest one. When the first tornisters that was issued to the German army was the M95 tornister. This was designed in 1895, and saw service throughout the First World War and with paramilitary units after the First World War and continued to be used right up until 1931 and bearers as well. In 1915 and 1916 it was replaced by the M1917 Tornster. This one here. So this one was basically the same apart from there was a few sort of slight differences to simplify production and ease the um, sort of manufacturing costs on it so instead of it being made out of cowhide or pony fur it was replaced that with being covered in canvas instead so if you have a look at this not only the top but the sides and the back are also co are all covered in cowhide and then with this one it's all, all gone However, they still retained the wooden sides, which the M95 had, and basically out of the inside is exactly the same. They did, however, add this little, these two things there, which I think are just to strengthen it. Um, and they also removed on the equipment straps, they removed these buckles here. However, after the end of the First World War, they continued to add them back on because why not? They, did, they weren't as hard pressed. In 1931, it was replaced by the M31, which was used throughout the 1930s and was soon superseded in 1934 by the Tornster 39. I got my M31 Tornster here. And I do have an M39 Tornster or a Tornster 39. However, it's in the post at the moment and it's not arrived. Thirty-four. So the big difference that it had, one of the big differences, is it got rid of all of the four straps there. Those are for mesting to be fixed, because uh, the first one more mesting for larger, and it allowed for the now smaller M31 mesting to be fitted there. However, it, used, it was also designed that it could be carried inside. There would have originally been a, a little bag, a carrying bag out here however that is missing on this variant and lots of soldiers didn't like it so they cut it out and you'll be able to see here this piece of cloth here that was where it was attached originally it was cut out by the soldiers they often made them into things such as maybe a case for binoculars or a pouch for a Kennings marker or the German disc tags another big difference is they got rid of the wood the sides and they also drastically changed the inside of it instead of the top section having buckle here and button here they just had one button there you'll be able to see here like both and also they drastically changed the bottom section as well instead of it having these loops that you've got to thread the thread the straps through it instead had a, a little stud at the bottom which this piece could be attached to here and it just had plain buckles at the top and got rid of um, the top flap because they had the part for the nesting to be added which was in a, in a way it also saves on a little bit of material as well probably not that much and also they padded the inside out as well so it would be slightly better on the soldier's back. I'll bring it closer so you can see. There's the, the you might be able to see the sort of crisscross, the, the box sort of pattern here being sewn. That was uh, what helped with like sort of the padding and it made it a little bit com more comfortable for the soldier. I believe they also made it wider as well. 
So if you have a look at this versus this, you can see it's probably about double the thickness. So you'll be able to get more kit inside it. It also made it easier for you to um, to pack it in the way that it was meant to be packed. They also added these buckles here as well. And they also added this part here, which was attached to the little stud at the bottom, which allowed it to be hooked onto the belt. If you wanted to, you could take these straps off and um, take this part off. Get a also, another thing they added was a little hook up here which was to allow for a strap to be attached and it replaced the old system of having a leather loop. It was however still used on the M95. Most of the ones that you'll find are either that going to be the M31s or the M34 or torn to the 39s because they were the main ones that we used to do in the Second World War. They did continue using these. The SS and the Waffen SS rather used these two mainly. They did have some tools to the 39s, however these two were the main ones they had. And also there were rear echelon units and just general units in the beginning of the Second World War that would have had these as well. Um, because when there was a m big mobilisation at the beginning of the war, the Germans didn't have enough kit so they were, would quite often issue out old First World War kit like ammo pouches, tornisters, helmets, rifles, bayonets etc that had survived the, the First World War and they basically kind of used them until they got the stocks got exhausted and then once the unit had say all their older tornsters had run out of them they then issued them the new tornsters. Now the tornster was superseded in 1944 by the Rucksack Model 44 however that was an improvement on the the M31 Cabrigs Jäger Rucksack, which was around in the interwar period and was also used by Luftwaffe units. And so yeah, that's all you really need to know. There was also the A-frame assault pack, however that's another kettle of fish, that was able to be attached to the Tornster 39 or um, M34 Tornster. These are basically sort of the main ones they used. They also had Czech Tornsters that they captured off the Czechs and the Poles. They also had a whole load of tornsters that they captured off the Russians in the early part of the war that they issued out, but they all got sort of superseded 43, 44 by the sort of the rucksack style of, of pack. So without further ado, I shall get on to showing you how to pack these. So first of all, you're going to need some kit. So what you're going to need are ankle boots. Blanket, zelt barn, zelt barn peg, pegs and accessories, your gaiters. This is a sort of a bit that you might need. You don't really need this, however, you can have it messed in. Two shirts, spare box of ammo. Bottle opener. I mean, you don't need that, but these are just some of the things that they would have carried. Fork and spoon set, or girfel, as it's called. Spare equipment strap. Boots in kit. Again, not essential. Wash kit. In wash roll. Shock and cola, or some other types of rations. Maybe some cigarettes, matches. Again, you might want to carry this jackknife, some sort of instruction booklet. Maybe this is just um, repro one on how to speak Russian, the Eastern Front. Flashlight. I'm not going to throw that. Take light. Two pairs of socks. You can have more if you want. Depends on how much you really want to pack. Um, long john top or thermal top. Um, long john trousers. Great coat. So, got all that stuff, and now you're going to need tornster. So, here is my M31 tornster. Now I'm going to pack 
both M M31 and my M17 torn stuff just because well it's easier um, so yeah I'll start off with um, actually I'll just do it the M31 torn stuff um, so yeah let's get started so you take your torn stuff and now the first thing you're going to want to do is after you've opened it is you're going to want to pack the top section there so again I'm probably just going to use one of these shirts I'll just use one shirt. So you want your spare shirt in there. You're supposed to carry two, but it all depends on how well you can fit the stuff in. You want wash roll. So I'll put the shirt in first. So you'd also want your thermals or long guns. So make it short, nice and small, put it in. I'm going to try and be as careful as I can with this because it's original 1941 dated, so I don't want it to slide. So that's the thermals. You might not want to pack them in, it all depends on your personal preferences. So you have your shirt, shirt in there. I'm just going to have to take out the thermals. Just pretend the thermals are in there. I'm not going to risk breaking this because it's survived so long. I'm not going to destroy it for a YouTube video. So, it would have been a lot easier when this was originally made. So, shirt in there. Then you're going to take wash roll, put that in there. Then, Boot clean kit. You can either stick that in there or you can stick it in there. I'm going to stick it in there actually. Then take any sort of books, paperwork, etc. you want. Stick, also stick that in there. Spare ammo, you can stick that in there. Take your girthel or fork and spoon set. Original 1940 dated one. Stick that in there. Any rations, stick that in there too. Jack knife, fast knife, stick that in there. Black smokes, also stick those in there. Torch or flashlight, whatever you want to call it, that can also go in there as well. So, you might possibly want to rearrange it until it's all sort of evenly spaced out. So, you want to put the button, and there you have your top compartment all done. I'm going to worry about that falling out. Anyway, so that is that. Sometimes they would sew along these parts just to avoid stuff falling out. Um, like I've seen that before on other variants, like other, other examples, I should say. So, once you've done that, you're going to want to open this section here, the main body section. So in here lives your boots. So you want to take your ankle boots. And I've seen several ways these have been put have been put in um, monsters. This is quite a common way. However, this is also another way you can do it. like that. Then take the gaiters, roll them up. You can do it individually or as a pair. I'm doing it as a pair. It's quicker. Stick them in the middle like so. Or you can stick this in there, the middle section. Originally would be for your mess tin, however you don't have to have your mess tin 
big wool one step then take the socks stick them either side underneath the boots etc or behind the boots if you want that will give you a little bit of extra padding so you want the socks cards socks basically going to save your feet from being destroyed by your boots because the boots back then were not forgiving on the feet so once you've done that that is basically the main compartment all packed main compartment packed close it up I'm going to be very careful with this because straps are quite weak I mean, the original one I actually did use my M1970 Hornster seeing it's not Second World War um, issue one and there'll be lots of people probably in the comments saying yeah it's not Second World War well uh, well use my M34 against my M31 against my 32 if you want because do it, do it right. I would buy myself a Reaper one. However, Reaper ones are like a hundred odd quid. Wasting that much on a reaper. I think I might be prepared to pay 50 for a reaper. Not, not 100. It's stupid money. So, yeah, that is all that. We then close it up. Like so. Now, there's several ways that I've seen the belt bars be worn. There's one way which I'll show you. But I disagree with it because it is not particularly useful. So take your velt barn, take your straps off your velt barn. Open your velt barn up. So unfold your velt barn like that. And then all you do is basically just fold it like that. Fold it again like that left basically with like a sort of square then you take torn stuff and you place it up on like so you can either have it like that or you can have it like that I, I choose to do it like that um, I disagree with this way I've seen it done but I just think it's a bit silly because your torn is already packed full of crap and you can obviously see that it Straps just about reach, just but it, it, I'm, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna do it with this just because it's original. So that is the way that most people do it. However, the way how I do it is do this up. So that is a second I can get it to. Probably do that down there because I've had to fix these straps because. They are 70 years old, maybe 5 years old, so whatever, however long, almost 30 years old actually. So try and do them up both, but not much going there. So that is the tournament stuff sort of done. Then, if you had intact the, these things, you do that, you fold it in like that. Oh, both mine have snapped. So that's the torn stuff like that. So you are kind of left with your belt bomb pegs. Great coat, blanket, belt bomb, and your straps. Now these are just spare equipment straps that I've just got 
holding my blanket in place. It's a look like a blanket, but it would, it would do the purpose for the blanket for the video because I don't have a um, cerebral gear blanket yet. Might get one, might not. Probably not worth it really. Anyway, so yeah. Got them, got the matches. Just stick them inside. You're gonna want to get them all laid out properly. So get your blanket. First, what you're gonna want to do is I'll lay it out for you so you can see how it's done. So gonna want to fold it in half. Then again yeah. half again half again pop this way then basically you're done you're done for the blanket again I forgot to put that in there as well I know it's like a fish Sorry. Anyway, put the belt on, open it up. So here's your belt on as it should be when it's folded up. At least as it should be looking as it's folded up. Um, so yeah, basically all I've done is just attached all the buttons from there and there all together. It's all in this shape. And then basically all you do is roll it up like this make sure you do it quite tightly as well there's nothing worse than having a loose sort of sheet or whatever you want to call this belt barn rather nothing worse than having a loose belt barn on your tornister just makes it a lot harder and stuff you've got to go under a lot more strain so there you have it it's sort of like a sausage shape now so you've got those two those two are now done almost ready to be attached so find a great coat so this is how i do the great coat now basically all the other ways that i found on the internet do not work for me they i just find them almost impossible just turn into a big clusterfuck with too much too much thinking about it it's just the easiest way how you can do it so what you do take one side basically just start rolling it up like this so it can be unbuttoned or um, buttoned up doesn't matter so fold the arms inwards like so make sure basically it's both halves of the great coat are together you just take one side, doesn't matter which side, and start to roll it up and roll it as tight as you can. And basically try and make sure that it's all stays nice and straight. And then once you get to the end, it should look something like this. So that's what it should look like when you're finished and ready to be attached to your to your torso. So that's that. So you have a place around like this. So it should look something like that from that side or from the other side. More like that. So, get your straps and take these off. You need three straps actually. Sorry, I forgot to say you need three straps. You get the first strap. You want to loop it through the top ring or loop here. There'll be a ring if it's a wartime one. Um, 
So get strap and then we'll thread it through the top loop like so. And you probably want to get it through to put about there. So you get two side straps. You can attach them two ways. You can either um, if your equipment strap has got a little part like this, like with the Mexican straps, that's fine. If they haven't, that's also fine. Um, so yeah, either it's like a nesting strap, you can fit it through like this. Go like that. Or if you don't, then you're gonna have to do it the other way. I'm just gonna do it this way, because I've got two nesting straps and non nesting strap at the moment. So I do have two nesting straps. Anyway, who cares? We thread these through side loops. Make it tougher. So yeah, that's that. I'll take that, change it. Makes more sense. Things are slightly lesser quality because it's like more of a pre stock quality um, leather. So, what I can fix it if it breaks. In case the leather shop fasteners and made my own uh, holsters and stuff like that. So, yeah, anyway, like that. So, it'll be like that. So, for first, let's add the rope barn if you're doing it this way. I were you, I personally have the zerp barn on the outside in case it rains, it doesn't wreck your blanket. Because then if it wrecks your blanket, you're kind of screwed for the night. Because, yeah, you'll be dry from the weather, but you'll be soaking wet because your zerp barns. Because uh, your blanket is soaking wet. So you then get your blanket, put it over the top like this. I've seen some madmen do this and then add the great coat on top. And I just think that is a bit too much. So place it on like so. Strap round like this. Let's go back. Like that. I'll do the strap on top first. Uh, actually, you know, I made a mistake doing the one on the outside first. Just because that then secures it, makes it turn quite up quite tight. I'm not going to go up quite tight with these because. It's the original bag uh, tornister, and I don't want to destroy it. So, like this, there you go, and there you have it the marching cap ready to go, uh, or the tornister ready to go for on the march um, or in use. Uh, so, that is kind of the one of the ways. Sometimes they'll have great coats too, which I'm just about to show you. However, most of the time it's just usually be a blanket and a zelt barn and a zelt barn and a blanket. So that is those. Now let's take them off. And you just take them off the same way as you put them on. Pretty simple. Just like this. Yeah. So another way, so Tornissa, Zelt Barn at the top, and then do one and two, great coat as well. I personally wouldn't use a great coat on a Thornster, it just gets in the way. And quite often they would just wear their great coats if they had great coats with them, just because it's easy, easier to wear a great coat than have it attached to a Thornster. It's quite a big, bulky, heavy thing. And some of the pictures that MBB 
MB Beats scent might actually not be of um, great coats, they could just be of the blanket. So, yeah, did the wrong thing again. Start off at the top. So, make sure it is aligned properly before you start. This up, I'm going to go onto the end of the third hole on this strap. This one can go up tighter just because it's the bottom end of the great coat. On this end, very similar, like so. And there you have it. The great coat felt by a Fornister. You can obviously see it doesn't look as good as the actual the blanket. So probably in those pictures of um, Hitler's, Hitler's inauguration, the um, MB Beach scent, um, the men there were all wearing blankets by the looks of it. To me, it, it could have been great coats, but look more like blankets to me probably more likely would have been blankets um, and especially as those men were part of the Liebstand data so they were in the black uniforms black parade uniforms so obviously they wouldn't have had a grey great coat um, anyway so just my opinion uh, this is how I pack my cornister I'm going to scrap the idea for the, um, showing you how to do it with the other other one um, just because I don't fancy wrecking my 1941 dated tourniquet and this one's in better condition. Um, so yeah, um, you could also add on um, wrapped up either in a bar or in your one of your uh, great coat or your blanket Zeltbarn peg bag, or you could attach it to the side um, via another equipment strap. But yeah, you quite often they just wrap them up in the Zelt barn and stuff them in. Um, quickly going to see if I can find one. I don't think I have any handy at, to hand at the moment. Um, no, I don't actually. So yeah, that is basically that. Um, yeah, that's. So that is the end of the video. Hope you guys enjoyed. Comment, subscribe. Bye.